Hello. Well, uh, today I'm going to be talking about probably one of the <clears throat> most popular uh, found footage films ever made. Uh, certainly the most uh, influential, because I, cause just after I said that, I, I'm like, well, that could be debatable nowadays because of, you know, all the other found footage films uh, that have come out since then, and I'm of course talking about the Blair Witch Project. Um, now, I know many people actually don't like this movie, and um, I can understand why, be it from the shaky camera uh, way of filming, and um, maybe just the story in general, like the plot, or Maybe people think it's, it could be an interesting plot or story and all, but they just the execution wasn't there or any many reasons as to why one might not like it. But I enjoy this film. Um, it's not one of my top uh, horror films, in my opinion. Not, uh, you know, not mine. Um, but maybe it is to somebody else. Maybe somebody really loves this film. And uh, it was so great. Um film was made by Daniel Merrick and Eduardo Sanchez. They wrote, directed, and edited the film. However, in terms of writing, uh, all the actors um, improvised um, their dialogue. Um, yet, uh, <clears throat> situations and stuff uh, were all, you know, apparently there were, like, cans and stuff, like, uh, go here after a certain amount of time it would be like some cans and everybody would have their own direction of what to do like today someone's gonna get the map from someone or you're gonna make sure you have the map no matter what or someone's gonna try and start a fight uh, and someone's gonna have to try and break it up and things like that um, it's quite interesting, um, and really, uh, this is one of the first uh, big notable examples of viral marketing uh, the film industry ever had. Um, they had a website back in the 90s. Um, I don't know if you can go to it now. I don't think so, or unless it's archived or something, but it used to be a website. It's not around anymore, but... You go to it, and it has all these like little files and all these stories of linking into this mythology of the Blair Witch, Maryland, and uh, and then as you go through the history, you would find out who the witch was, and then all these other things like uh, some serial killer did this and that, and killed a bunch of kids, and um, just some interesting stuff. And then it would end with in October of '94. 1994, uh, you know, three student filmmakers disappeared in the woods near Burkittsville, Maryland, while shooting a documentary. A year later, their footage was found, you know, and then this was it. And um, what's interesting on here is there's a documentary uh, in this that is like, um, they, they, they. It's a mockumentary uh, in that all the people in this, they're all like actors or <clears throat> maybe they're all relatives or some of them are relatives of the cast members. And they're just telling stories. They're telling about like, oh, they're talking about this and that, da, da, da. And they go off and one of them wasn't thinking about, like, I wish they didn't and I wanted to try and tell them not to, but they really wanted to, whatever, and... I had a bad feeling, but uh, I didn't vocalize it enough. So it's quite interesting. Um, uh, what kind of a big phenomenon this whole film had when people saw the movie. A lot of people actually thought, yeah, spoiler alert, uh, I guess, you know, well, it says they're missing, so I guess in a way. This might not be too much of a surprise, but... 
you know, they, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like they're, you know, they're dead, but uh, a lot of people thought they were dead, um, because of how real this film looked, it just freaked so many people out, and it's just had a huge impact. One that the, the, the filmmakers didn't see coming, the actors didn't. Um, you know, the actors thought that you know, well, it'd be kind of cool and fun to do. Thought it would be an interesting idea, but I'm not sure many thought this film would be a, a success it became. Um, and um, just look at some of the uh, actors. Um, there's Heather Donahue, and Michael Williams, Michael C. Williams, and Joshua Lucas, or Joshua Lucas. Joshua Leonard, uh, no, Lucas. Joshua Leonard, he's the only one who's actually uh, still an actor. Uh, the others, after a while, just stopped. Uh, Heather Donner Donahue, um, she's a. Uh, she began writing books. Uh, she became a medical marijuana grower <clears throat> in 2008, and she wrote a book about that. And, um, yeah, she seems to be doing fine. Um, Michael Williams, he's, uh, he's acting in some things, uh, To become a counselor, a uh, guidance counselor. So uh, that's what he's really doing now. Uh, they all seem to be doing fairly well for themselves, even if they're not all acting now. Um, there were two sequels to this film, um, Blair Witch 2. Um, what was it called? Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. And basically, people didn't like that movie. Essentially, it's like both um, it's both the film itself is acknowledged to be both it was all a movie and yet real like this film you know came out was huge but also it, it was weird the film in the franchise, the first film in this franchise is being acknowledged as first one as a film, and yet it's uh, it's weird. The director didn't like it, and he thought that the whole film, you know, uh, it just deviated so far when the studio got over and recut it and everything, it just it had them do some reshoots for various things, and it's just, basically the director is not fond of it, and, um, why I don't have that film, um, I haven't seen the sequels, so I can't really c properly comment on them, but from what I've heard on the commentary of that film, of the second film, the director just let the studio have it, and he's just bashing them, and it's just, apparently it's just, it's something to hear. It's quite interesting. And, um, I don't entirely blame the dude. You know, the studio took the movie and you know, had an idea where to take it, and then they wanted different things. He tried to put whatever he wanted uh, incorporated into the movie the best he could while the studio was having certain demands that being done for being shot and re-editing, and, yeah, it was just a mess. And then there was a new film called Blair Witch, where, uh, uh Heather Donahue's fictional brother, 
goes looking for her. Because I guess he, uh, you know, he believes she's uh, still alive, so he's going to try and find her. And, um, yeah, I have no clue what all happened. Um, exactly if they lived or died, but. Yeah, it's just, it is, uh, ever since the first film, you know, people haven't been too uh, fond of the sequels. Um, and the first film, in many ways, for as groundbreaking as it was within the found footage genre, because it really did ca uh, coin that term, found footage. It would be a hard act to follow. I mean, I think people can acknowledge that, whether you like the film or not. You can just acknowledge that, you know. Doing a sequel to this would be hard to do, and do it justice to both. Do not only the first film, do it in a way proud by being a good sequel and respecting the first film and being something itself and probably adding to the lore of the old Blair Witch stuff. Because um, the original directors actually did plan this to be a part of a series of films, but then they had like no involvement of, of the sequel and all. And um, I don't know if they had anything to do with uh, the, the third film. I don't believe so. No. Uh, but, no. Blair Witch Project. Uh, people either enjoy it or they don't. Um, I enjoy it, but it wasn't the first found footage film. Uh, uh, films like um, Cannibal Holocaust is notably the uh, considered one of the first films to do this kind of style. Um, there's another film I saw. Like a UFO abduction. Uh, that was later remade, <clears throat> like a decade later, uh, called Alien Abduction Incident in Lake County. UFO abduction is on YouTube, or at least it used to be. And where I could, uh, that's where I saw it, and I thought it was really good. Many people thought that was real, though, and um, it wasn't. It was later remade. Um, but you know, uh, while this isn't the very first found footage film, it is the very first found footage film to really introduce the whole world to this genre and style of filmmaking. Um, I would say since uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, Cannibal Holocaust uh, in terms of the style that they made it as well as sort of the, the impact because both films had quite a bit of an impact on people. People thought people, real people died in Cannibal Holocaust when eh, they didn't. But yeah, um, I enjoy this film. Perhaps you do, perhaps you don't. Um, not sure if I'll uh, do other, you know, films of this nature, uh, found footage, uh, possibly in the future. I don't know. I just kind of wanted to mix it up in the midst of talking about franchise films and stuff that I often talk about. Um, I thought this was a nice change of pace. Even though I guess technically the Blender Witch Project is part of a franchise now. Um, still, it's... It wasn't... Um, you know, at the time it came out, people didn't see how it could be a sequel. Um, but anyway, um, 
that's really all I gotta say about the Blair Witch Project. I enjoy it. Uh, perhaps you do, perhaps you don't. But I think it's interesting. I thought it was an interesting film. Um, I think it's one of those found footage films that's very good. Paranormal Activity that was done to death. I think after the first one, I should have just left it at one film. But of course, if it makes a bunch of money, you got to have a sequel. Same thing happened a year. And while uh, directors did think of a sequel, they had no involvement. So who knows how they would have liked to have advanced the series from this. I don't know. But anyway, that's all I got to say today. Um, hope you all have a good week. Hope you all... Uh, have a good day, and uh, yeah, until next time, see you later.